Love aviation. I started flying when I was 16 years old and I got about 35,000 hours of Alaska bush flying, if you want to call it that. And, but an airplane has always been a tool for me. And uh, <clears throat> I guess the, uh, it's been a tool to explore wild places. And um, so I'm always looking for the best tool, right? The best thing to do to explore that and the best way to do it and the best modification you can put on it to do whatever, you know? And so you guys are in an amazing place here because underneath one roof right here, you're making a bunch of cool stuff. So <clears throat> I've got quite a few pictures here. I'll just go through them. It's kind of a story that kind of tells itself as it goes. <clears throat> but this is our home. Uh, we're on the Chitna River. It's 100 mile, 150 miles long from the glacier source to where it dumps into the Copper River at Chitna, and we're the only humans on the entire river. And we've lived there year-round for 40 years. Now we're using one of your tools that you make here, right here, the Arctic Oven Tent. I have been a promoter or a proponent of, <laughs> a user of uh, Arctic Oven Tents since they first came out. I've left many on top of mountains. I've had them stand up all winter. I've lived in them. I've done everything. Uh, and they're awesome. It's that, that one device right there has changed wild, wild adventures and made them much more comfortable. <laughs> and my wife says she wants to spend an entire year in one. I don't know if I'm... <laughs> as I get older, I don't think that sounds quite as good. But <clears throat> a lot of cozy, nice nights in Arctic oven tents. Part of our business is science related. Uh, there's only two aircraft, three aircraft in the world that do continuous NASA funded glacier research. Two of them are owned by NASA, uh, P3 Neptunes, is that right? Orions, uh, turboprop, <clears throat> and they do uh, Greenland and Antarctica. But we do all of the glaciers from southern British Columbia to the Aleutian Islands uh, twice a year, springtime and fall. This is a glacier lake that's dumping as, a, as we're watching it. It's dumping out and uh, you know, it was maybe a, almost a half a mile across and just a, a few minutes it all went out. It was pretty spectacular. The ice started opening up and doing all kinds of crazy things and we're running in various places to stay away. <laughs> Technology has changed a lot over the years. Uh, the computers, you know, we got Google Earth, we got all kinds of things that at our advantage. But the wilderness is still wilderness and it's still wild. You have to respect it. But I think there's something in exploring wild places, there's something, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me, but uh, for me, for sure, um, I find meaning in life by, by doing it. So. One of the biggest things that's changed in my life is the big tires, I mean, of course, once again, that you make. And actually, the 35, I can remember the day I was with Bill Duncan, and uh, I said, you know, could you put, the, he built those 35 inch tires for beavers. And uh, that's great, but what about on a Super Cub? They really work great on a Super Cub. And he said, oh, they'd never work good on a Super Cub. It'd be horrible for a Super Cub. Said, if you could build them light, if you could, you know, cut them down to the right size and you could find the right wheel to put on there, it would revolutionize a Super Cub. Ah, oh, I don't think, they'd never sell. Well, I don't care if they sell or not, I want a pair. So you get them for, would you build one for me? Yeah, okay, I'll build one for you. Anyway, now you guys know the rest of the story. But anyway, they're very, very important and it's changed. For good, there's always, anytime there's change, it can be good and bad. <laughs> so uh, your tires have made it easier for a lot more people to get out into the wild places. And some of them maybe shouldn't be there and maybe don't have the experience to be there. But um, you see as we go along here, there, there's other reasons for them. And, yeah, it's a very big necessity in my book. It's probably the biggest mod that you can put on an airplane. You could take a stock Super Cub that you know did have zero mods on it and put those tires on it. And you could do 90% of what I do. <clears throat> so that's huge. I mean, that's, you guys should feel very proud of being able to do that. You know, what I mean, and the gear you take. So uh, we just got done with our our annual. Uh, pilot training, recurrent training today. And one of my, my uh, what I had to talk about was, was survival gear to carry an airplane. And uh, the survival gear is related to where you're going, obviously. But the best survival gear you could possibly have is the gear that you use regularly. I always get a kick out of people that have survival gear and they have it in a box. And they've had that box in their plane for 40 years and they've never dug it out, right? Guess what? When they need to use it, it isn't going to work. <laughs> so big change here uh, in both safety and 
maybe even a notch out of the wilderness aspect because to me the true wilderness is unpredictable. Uh, cell phones, sat phones have made, uh, made the world more predictable but also safer and of course because of that we carry them with us all the time. I had, I, I, just to give you an example, you, know, you guys really, uh, if you pull anything away from this, that I, my presentation, I hope it is that, uh, that you're proud of what you do, because you really, uh, you're, make, you're in an amazing business, uh, it really does good things for people. I had some clients on the Iditarod Trail that had never slept in a sleeping bag. They had never camped out, ever. And we camped the entire way from, from Anchorage to Nome, Every single night, we saw 50 below zero. We were in Arctic oven tents. They were so excited. We got to the, the Bering Sea ice in front of Nome. We landed on the uh, right in front of town. And they said, I had a hotel for them there at uh, Nugget. And they said, ah, we, do, we, do we have to stay in the Nugget? Can we put the t Arctic oven tent up on the ice here and we'll camp out there? So we did. <laughs> Save a few dollars. <laughs> Sometimes the, uh, the bush wheels aren't quite big enough. <laughs> a little bit bigger and it would have been just fine. Actually, that's a, a happy ending picture. The ice was so slippery there. It's Arturo's plane and he landed above this crevasse and he can finally turn sideways and the plane slid down into that. And it actually didn't hurt anything. And the reason it didn't hurt anything because of those tires. If it had been any 31s on there, it would have done substantial damage to it. You could see the prop was off. It didn't. He didn't even bend the prop. Okay, so, I, uh, so so for sales guys, let's have some questions. Now you can get into the details here. You don't have to ask them about everything. Yeah, anything. Answers. Can you tell us more about flying with four plays? What makes it different? Um, yeah. I guess there's really nothing I don't like about it. It's got great visibility. Uh, when I get in the normal cubs, I go, man, I can't see out of this thing. You're sitting off in the four place, you're sitting off the side a little bit, and the way uh, Kirk did the cowling, it goes in quite a bit like this, so you're kind of looking right down there. Uh, it's just super comfortable, it's stable. Um, you know, at Valdez, it won't, it wouldn't beat our Alpha Cub, but it'd be in there, you know, it'd be right, be pretty impressive. Well, one last thing I would like to add to the very, uh, end here. Um, we we are privileged here in Alaska, and we have, because of that privilege, we need to consider some things, and that is uh, to fly safe. Uh, the more accidents that happen, the more regulations. You know, the government wants to fix an accident by creating more regulations. So, um, and and in treating the wild places like you know, with soft touch. Leave no trace. We're very big um, proponents of landing in places that don't leave lasting marks. Um, you know, those kind of kind of things. So, the more you can do that, the more longer the for many, many generations to come. That I'm, my oldest daughter is going to make me a grandpa here in a few days. And I hope that he will be able to do what I did. <laughs>